Hello and welcome to Women's Workers Power because today is International Working Women's Day and we have a jam-packed show. I'm Genesis, she, her, and you just listened to For My Titters by Barker. Thank you to Transmission, Solidarity on International Working Women's Day, and thank you to Zedlines. As tomorrow is International Working Women's Day, we have a jam-packed show, Women Workers Power. We will start off with M from the Black People's Union and then follow up with women from A Fuel, Queensland Council of Unions, Young Workers Hub, QNMU, and Respect. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from which we broadcast, the Yuggera and Turbal people. This land was stolen, never ceded. We pay our respects to elders, past and present. We acknowledge all First Nation comrades listening today. We stand in solidarity with First Nations people in their struggles for recognition, reparations and land rights. We live and benefit on stolen land. It's time to pay the rent. And today in the studio, we have M from the Black People's Union. What's up, M? Ginnigai you mom. Um, yeah, my name's M Randall. Um, I'm a Jaeger woman and um, I'm here representing the Black People's Union, yeah, on w- workers' power. It's going to be deadly. Hell yeah. We've had you on the show before, but not in the studio, so it's good to have you in the studio in the flesh today. Yeah, last time I came on, um, I used to work in early childhood, so I had a bit of a yarn about, you know, being First Nations working in early childhood, and now I'm here doing something a little bit different, but yeah, it's awesome. So what's the Black People's Union? So the Black People's Union is a union for First Nations people by First Nations people. We are a revolutionary organisation, and we are anti-capitalists, we are anti-colonialists, and um, we are in the pursuit of full de- full self-determination, full sovereignty, and um, yeah, we, we just want, basically, we don't want um, so-called Australia, put it in the bin, get rid of it. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So um, are there any like unique issues like in the workers' workplace that black people face uniquely? I mean, working in the colony, we're always going to be put on the back foot and we're always going to be, um, you know, the ones in the bin. Um, We obviously, yeah, obviously the racism um, and often we uh, have to leave our countries for jobs and all those sorts of things. Um, Yeah, I think it's really important to have a union that's just... Yeah, like um, anyone can join. We have like associate memberships too for non-Indigenous people, but the main membership is all black fellas. And I think that's, um, it's such a special camaraderie almost. It's just, yeah, it's so deadly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sure like if if we're in a a union, any other union, um, First Nations people could be spoken over. And they're also like like um, in other unions I've been in in the past, there's like a separate First Nations cohort. You know what I mean? Like we're not integrated and a part of it. It's like, oh, here's the black fellas over here and they can talk about their black stuff. But Like like an afterthought. Like yeah, it's not kind, the like main they have meal. their little committees and shit, but it's not like integrated. Whereas this, like we are the focus. We are on the front foot with the Black People's Union. And, you know... Yeah, we're here to listen. We know um, the unique issues that blackfellas face. We're here to represent employed blackfellas, non-employed blackfellas, blackfellas that are on work for the dole and on those... What are those little gammon cards that, like... Cashless welfare cards? Cashless welfare cards. We're here for blackfellas on the pensions and on other Centrelink and, um, yeah, all in between. Like me, I'm on the disability pension. Like, you know, we're, we're all in different you know little areas and we all support each other in different ways so yeah and so that's like across all industries whether it's absolutely retail or yeah every single industry um and and non-industry if you're not working you're still like we'll support you if centrelink's fucking you over you know we're here to support you you know um if you're on the streets we're here to support you if you're um yeah if you're homeless we're here to support you if um yeah, everything in between we're here for all black fellas, period. Absolutely. I feel like often um, between employment, those unemployed workers always get, like, overlooked. Um, and, oh, Centrelink has a whole range of issues. Absolutely. Fuck and on Centrelink. the cashless welfare card, when they introduced it, there's certain communities where they chose to 
to introduce oh, it absolutely. first. absolutely. And, and you look at the cashless welfare card and there's so many things, like you can't buy school uniforms with it. You can't. There's so much that you can't buy with it. And, and you know, these mothers out there, single mothers, black mums, and on their cashless welfare card and there's so much they can't buy. So they end up, got, like, even Centrelink thinks they're doing us a favour, but they're actually, it's just another tool of oppression. And control. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I could I could talk for hours on the cashless welfare card, but uh, what other campaigns are like happening? So our biggest campaign at the moment is our um, statement against the voice. We demand better than just a voice. Um, yeah, um, as the Black People's Union, um, we believe that yeah we deserve much better than a voice. The voice is. Um, um, Will it even it's do damning. anything? It's not going to do anything. The Voice is an advisory board, full stop. And not only is it an advisory board, it's an advisory board that is picked by the parliament. So the people sitting on that advisory board, um, they're going to pick people who have the same opinions. To be the mouthpiece. To be the mouthpiece. To, they're just given us the breadcrumbs of the breadcrumbs and say, here you go, shut up, you've got a seat at the table. But we never asked for that table. We never wanted that table. So, and we've had advisory boards before that have been dissolved by the government. So, you know, and at the end of the day, like, that you look at the people who are funding um, the voice to parliament, like mining companies, like, why would a thing that is good, for, why would, like, this campaign that is supposedly good for blackfellas and represents our sovereignty be supported by a mining company it doesn't make sense yeah because the mining companies um what they want is in direct opposition to to land back yeah like i found out this morning from kieran who's a part of the black people's union that the government has now put in 85 million dollars into the yes campaign can you imagine... So they want money, it to happen. They Absolutely. And can you imagine what that money could have gone to? It could have gone to doctors. It could have gone to mental health care. Our kids are killing themselves. We need mental health support. We that Imagine all the Aboriginal housing that could have... Like, it just makes me sick. Like, you know, we've, they're sitting on millions while we have mob sleeping on the street, on Boundary Street. Like, So this could do active harm. Absolutely. And, like... And if it do, like it will, you know, it is a, it is a threat to our sovereignty. And at the end of the day, relying on the colony for change is completely futile. We will never get change or justice from this colony. We will only get it from grassroots movements. Like, yeah, we have to. It will only come from us. It will never come from the government. Absolutely not. We've seen what the government's done in the past, and it's all empty words. And I've I've heard I've heard. Um, the only thing this voiced parliament will do is just make white people feel better. Oh, absolutely. Like as it's if tokenistic garbage. And then you look at the fact that it's a referendum, you know, we're only 3% of the population. So our vote, even if we all voted the same, which we won't because we're not a monolith, Yeah. It, we, our vote will, like, it won't hold any sustenance because we've got 97% of colonisers and settlers voting like on our behalf and then you know one third of black fellas are under 15 so there's not that many you know do you think how many of us are 18 and over you know so then we've got literally less than three percent like there's not many of us left over to vote so it's like everyone but first nations people get to say pretty much yeah like we like yeah we could all vote like um but um and we could all vote the same and it's still sadly it wouldn't matter so yeah it's gammon so what should our listeners do on the on the voice? How how should we respond to that? Um, we're not going to tell you how to vote. Personally, in my opinion, I say vote no. But there's also the other idea that you could resist the referendum and not vote at all and just cop that fine. So there's there's um, there's pathways. But like yeah, like and. I'm not telling you you can't vote yes, but like just sit down and listen to the black fellas that are talking um, and yeah, just turn your binangs on. So speaking of that, on the um, 11th of March this Saturday, we are having a rally um, all across the East Coast. Um, we demand more than just a voice. It's a protest of the voice to parliament. It's going to be in Minjin, it's going to be in Nam, it's going to be in Canberra and it's going to be in Sydney 
all at 11 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, biggest black... It's our first Black People's Union rally, officially. That's going to be huge. Yeah, so we've got all sorts of speakers. And so, basically, if you're a bit confused about The Voice or you want to support us and resist The Voice, this is the place to go. And, um, yeah, and we've got... Um, and we're going to be supported by, like, there's a bunch of mob, like, doing other deadly stuff in Minjin, like Tree Before Voice, they're doing some deadly stuff. And then over that weekend on the Saturday and the Sunday, there's a camp out out at Deben Creek. I'm so sure you fellas know about that. Yeah. To celebrate the, is it second year anniversary, I think? I don't remember. I think it's second years, but I might I might be wrong. But, yeah, and... um. Also that weekend, the Treaty Four Voice fellas are going on a convoy down to Sydney um, to go to support, do, um, talk to the fellas down there because this Yes campaign dogs, like, they're shitting their pants now because they're going around and doing panels because they're hearing that actually no one understands the voice and the voice is purposely vague. They've done yes, it on purpose. Yes, they don't so want it to, sounds good if you don't read too far into it. They don't want us to understand and it. And it puts the labour on you to look into it further and do your own research. But, of course, no one wants to do that, especially not white people. Yeah, and as black fellas, they just, like, they just want, like, they don't want us to look into it. But we are smart. We're not stupid. That's sinister. It is sinister. So, anyway, they're going around doing their panels. So, you know, we as Black People's Union have plans to do panels as well and, you know, the True Before Voice fellas are going to go around hopefully and, and yarn up to people and, you know, because if there's just yes panels going around, then that's their goal. They didn't think that we were going to do anything to, you know, like they thought they were going to, oh, we'll do panels and then we'll be on the top again. It's like, you know, we've been sidelined as these radicals, but we're not... Yeah, I mean, we are. I think we're pretty radical. But it's a bit infantilising, it is. isn't it? They're like, oh, these stupid little idiots in the corner who uh, want to vote. No, they don't understand. It's like, I think we understand more than you do, actually. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the there's a big weekend happening, mm. uh, 11 a.m. in Minjin. What's the location for that? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. So um, Minjin is Queen's Gardens, where Invasion Day was. And oh, the yes. goal is to... Um, March to um, Parliament House and back. And um, so on our Instagram at Black People's Union, we have the protest post that talks about in the other cities um, where they're meeting and all that sort of thing. And we have all sorts on our Instagram. We have, you know, a lot more in-depth stuff about um, how we feel about the voice. Um, we talk about treaty um, and, you know, yeah, go check it out. We're also on Facebook. But, yeah, I think Instagram's the spot to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm a Zoomer. Yeah. <laughs> Instagram's where it's at. So uh, that's Black People's Union and it is Black spelt B-L-A-C-K. Yes. Yeah. I know there's some other spellings going around. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's awesome. Okay, so big weekend. Um, we've got that rally happening. Um, we've spoken about The Voice. Did you want to speak about, like, your own experiences with, like, being First Nations in the workplace? Uh, it's always been gammon like in um you're either like completely ignored or you're made the token there's no in between um yeah it's kind of nice to be like on like I'm I'm not like obviously getting on the disability pension wasn't my life goal but <laughs> it's um I definitely acknowledge the privilege that um now that I can like rest and look after myself and um I feel like rest and resting is resisting the colony and looking after myself and my health is resistance but it also gives me a little bit of I guess space to do stuff like this now too so yeah um it's deadly yeah um my memory's real bad but like yeah being in the workplace as a black fella it's um yeah you either get completely ignored like either no one cares at all or you're this little token little yeah, and everyone thinks and that like, doesn't in my feel last no in my workplace like everyone thought I would like they didn't understand that like Aboriginal people and First Nations people all around this continent like we're not a monolith and my opinion's not everyone so they'd get my opinion on something and be like okay that's the official Aboriginal stance it's like no it's not like we're not all the same do you yeah. ever get people tell you that your opinion's wrong because a different Aboriginal person said something different yes yes like they'll be like oh but blank said this it's like we're allowed to have different opinions like 
like do do we say that all white people have the same opinion like god no. no so like why are we put on the like obviously we agree on a lot of things but there's also a lot of things we don't agree on and that's okay and i would just wish that we would be allowed to disagree and yarn up without the colony interfering and now this like you know this voice to parliament it's also being used as something to divide us to separate you know, to go yeah. you know they want us to fight between us to go oh well you're voting yes and oh well you're voting no it's like we don't want that we don't need more division we need to come together so like as you know um, yeah yeah i've heard that um if the voice to parliament goes through it might make things harder in terms of getting treaty I would, yeah, I think they're going to um, give the voice to part. Like, if it wins, like, if it gets it, I think everything else we want will just be thrown in the bin because they'll be like, oh, well, we gave you a voice, so shut up now, go away. Yeah, oh, you're ungrateful, look at what we gave you. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Black People's Union, like, in the... the not, lots of Blackfellas have different opinions on treaty, but um, with, at BPU, we feel we are not looking for treaty with the colonial government. We're looking for treaty between our sovereign nations. Like, you know, there's over 500 of us. We don't need... Why would we want to get in a treaty with our abuser? Yeah. Like, that's, like, with our, you know, that's domestic violence. Like, no, we want treaty amongst ourselves. We want to heal some of those rifts that have come, that have come between nations because of colonialism. And, um, yeah, we'll be stronger and better. Yeah, Hell yeah. And deadlier. I like what you said about um, it being, like, an abusive relationship it is we're in an abusive relationship with this colony and no one cares you can't all. trust them to do the right thing that's it it's like why would we like constitutional recognition why would we want to get into a formal document with our abuser like yeah uh, uh, just yeah. just something more Doesn't that they can good use to me. <laughs> yeah yeah um awesome so we've got the instagram that we can follow black yes. people's union um, we've got the rally happening. Yep. 11 a.m. Minjin Queen's Gardens. 11th of March, this Saturday. This Saturday. Yes. And it's also happening uh, all over the yep. continent. Nam, Canberra, Sydney. Um, also, if you do want to support us, feel free to come and um, join the Black, Un- the Black People's Union. If you're a black fella, come on down. Um, but if you're, you know, non-First Nations, you can still be an associate member and you can still kind of be a part of the movement and support us and hopefully soon we'll have a paypal working so that you can um yeah give us some money if you feel so inclined that would be deadly because there's lots of things we have planned and lots of things we want to do we're only just getting started hell yeah yeah and um if you want to read more in depth about some of our opinions we have our website that we have quite in depth we had a media release about the rally yeah, we yarn up about a lot of things on the w- website that you can't quite fit onto Instagram. So, yeah, we've got lots of stuff out there. Um, so go check it out. It's a good opportunity to read more into things in a way that can be, like, properly understood. Um, like on The Voice, you've got information on, on The Voice up there. Yeah, we've got heaps of information about The Voice. Because it's all vague. Yeah, and um, soon I've made up a little zine about colonial treaty. And oh, I love zines. I know, and the voice. So hopefully we can uh, print that out soon. That'll spread be it deadly. around. Spread it around because it's a bit more in depth than it, it. And I like to explain things in layman's terms because the voice has been deliberately using big words so that um, people don't understand. Whereas I'm um, speaking accessibly is very important to me. So. To make this little zine, little book that, you know, and it just helps you understand it a bit more. And we have lots of infographics on our Instagram too that, you know, short and sweet. If your brain doesn't feel like reading an essay, you know, we've got little infographics that just kind of get to the point. Yeah. Awesome. Hell yeah. Um, is there anything else you wanted to touch on? No, I don't think so. But yeah, come on down on Saturday um, and support us. But if you can't make it, we will. We have other events in the future. So, um, but no, please come on down if you can. It's going to be real deadly. Um, let's uh, show so-called Australia that um, we're not interested in their game and voice, and we deserve more. We we never asked for a voice. We deserve so much more than that. We will, we will never ask for pre- gr- breadcrumbs, ever. And if we're not listening to First Nations voices, then we're speaking over them. Yeah, 
exactly. So if you want to come on down and listen, Saturday is the day. I know there's another protest on at the same time. Maybe you can come back and forth if you're feeling a bit fit. But um, I, yeah, obviously I'm biased <laughs> about which protest, but they're both probably going to be deadly. So, but yeah, please come on down to on Saturday. Yeah. Hell yeah. Awesome. Well, we're going to uh, go to a song now. This is Spring to Life by Tia Costello. Thank you so much for joining us, Anne. Of course. Have a deadly day. Thank you. Bye.